Okay, so Mythfill database just finished running, and like I said, it took probably about 10 minutes. And the next thing I'm going to go ahead and walk you through is the Mythbuntu Control Center. And this is going to be specific only to Mythbuntu. Uh, you're not going to get it on any other distribution. You can still install it on Ubuntu and Linux Mint and other Debian. Uh, you can probably even build it on other things, because I'm sure it's all open source. But for this, we're just going to go ahead and run Mythbuntu. Ubuntu Control Center. I think is what it is. Nope. Center E. Did I spell that right? Ubuntu. Oh, right. There we go. Okay, so this is the specific Mythbuntu Control Center, and they made this for doing a lot of general service on your MythDB box. And first up is the database, and this is just your MySQL. You can run the MythDB setup uh, that we just finished running through right here, and this will actually kill the back end and start it up for you. And you can also set up your where your remote connectivity is for um, for front ends to connect to the back end. That's all done right here on the first MySQL page. Themes, you can install whatever themes you want, uh, what Mythbuntu artwork you want, all right there. System roles. This is the same thing we got when we were going through setup where you can say no backend or primary, secondary backend. I don't know why mine's actually set to a secondary backend. That's actually very strange. Let's change that. Um, no front end or front end. You can also install the full desktop for Kubuntu, Xbuntu, Xubuntu, or Ubuntu right here just by checking the box. It takes a while. It will download all the packages it needs and install those. Services. This is also the same thing when we were going through the setup. What If you want VNC, Samba, SSH, that kind of stuff. Plugins. These are specific Myth TV plugins. Uh, you have <coughs> all sorts of ones for MythWeb is one I recommend everyone use for MythTV. It's very fantastic. MythVideo will get other video source, not video sources, but other videos you have downloaded to a hard drive. Weather is obvious. Gallery shows pictures. <coughs> Myth movies, I believe that one shows time, movie times in your area. Myth music gets plays your music. They have some games. MythFlix will uh, manage your Netflix queue. Browser is an actual browser, and archive will allow you to burn shows off to a DVD or CD. And enabling a password for uh, MythWeb is here as well. Updates, you can do update managers, a package manager, or a terminal straight from here. And launch the update manager in the background or notify in a panel. Startup behavior, automatically log in and automatically start the front end. That's pretty standard if you want this to be a directly plugged into your DV and what you're actually using. Infrared allows you to do the remotes again. I've actually changed remotes since I did my initial install and so I changed it to the Myth TV Media Center and then when you do change generate a dynamic buttons mapping and that'll generate all the buttons you need. Codex, you'll want these for uh, DVD playback, uh, certain different videos for FFmpeg, that kind of stuff. Drivers will launch, will actually launch the restricted drivers manager, which is the same thing in Ubuntu, and then a specific NVIDIA settings manager for me because I have a NVIDIA video card, or if you have an ATI slash AMD video card, it'll launch that one. And export will, is just a, it's a plugin that allows you to export videos as a whole section here of what you can actually export them. And this has its own configuration site as well. So I did change one thing for my master backend. So I'm going to apply that. Okay. I probably needed to start at a sudo. I'll go back and do that later. So we have the basic backend setup as well as the uh, Myth Control Center we just walked you through. I'm going to walk you through now uh, scanning channels and how to actually get that information usable. So we're going to go ahead and start the uh, Myth TV setup, which is the back end setup again. It says it needs to kill the back end. Okay. Got our password.
and this is done <coughs> excuse me this is done through our input connections and let's do one that I know well the HDPVR like I said I don't scan for channels I fetch those from my listing because I don't want to scan my cable box my let's start with analog analog is here we're gonna say scan for channels and this is gonna have okay what tuner we're using desired service TV TV and radio all I'm um, only going to get the free stuff. There's nothing that's going to be encrypted on analog, a full scan, and it's cable. Next. This one's going to be really short. Actually, this one freezes for me on channel 15, and I need to figure out why. Uh, but it updates that. I can stop the scan here. Finish. That was a bad example to start with. Uh, let's start with my HD home run. Uh, let's go back to... The, this is the HVR 1600 digital tuner. So I'd go scan for channels here. Uh, we're only going to look for TV, only free. On these, on QAM stuff, I actually do test the decryptability uh, just because certain cable channels will just set a flag that says encrypted or not. And if it's not actually encrypted, it doesn't work. And you have a whole description at the bottom there as well. This is going to be for me. It's cable. Cable high is what I recommend for QAM stuff because it's uh, qualm channels are always like 88 and above, at least for Time Warner Cable, Comcast, all the major cable companies. And so you would just say modulation is 256, which every cable company uses either 60. Every cable company in the U.S. uses 64 or 256. <clears throat> Terrestrial is if it's over the air. If you have an antenna, you can scan for channels using that. And that would actually, for me, that should actually pick up a couple channels. But I'm going to stick it with the QAM 256, your starting channel, your ending channel, and next. <clears throat> and this is going to take a very, very long time. You, if the fill database takes maybe 10 minutes, this takes probably a half hour, uh, maybe 45 minutes. I'm not going to finish this one. I'm just, or I'm not going to let it finish. I'm just going to say finish here. And let's just assume it goes through. It'll tell you if this is your first scan, it'll tell you, hey, I got a whole bunch of channels. I'm going to go ahead and import them. You can go into this channel editor here and let's sort by just that those channels. These are ones that it just brought in and it has here for me. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, I got BBC America. These are my standard. 2, 7, 9, 13, 11, that kind of stuff. MTV Hits. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. Some of it's named, some of it's not. And so that's where it gets in even more tricky. So let's say Channel 4, NBC. I'm going to go ahead and... Oops. Let's go back up here. NBC, if you hit Enter on it, this shows a whole bunch of information about the channel. And this is the name that will show up when you're changing channels. This is the number... I like to keep these at whole numbers so that you can change the channel with the remote easily because it's you, there's no underscore on your remote. So I find it a big hassle if it's that way, but we're going to change that a different through a different service. Uh, visible or not, this just shows if, if it shows it up in the guide or not, or if it's actually you can uncheck it and it's hidden. And so you can still use it. You can still record from it, but you have to know how to get there. Uh, this is just what type of format. An icon, if you want an icon, you can actually download that automatically too. And the XML TV ID, this is very, very important for all your channels. All your channels have a very unique XML ID. And this is where it gets its guide information through Schedules Direct. And so you'll want that information if you go over to Schedules Direct website. And let's click on that one. Let's click on that one. <laughs> Okay, so channel, it was channel 4, right? NBC. Okay, so channel 4, if I hover over channel 4, it pops up 10590. That's my standard definition one, and I have one more, 404, 9568. This one will be the HD version because it's QAM, which will be HD, 19568. You notice they are different between, even though it's they're both NBC, 19568 or... Uh, 10590. They can show different information and the guide will adjust for that. And so I want to keep this to what it actually is, 19568. Hit next, finish. 
I can also icon download. Um, download icon for NBC, Channel 4. I don't know if it actually got it there. Let's see. Yes, it did. So I have, uh, it now has an icon location here. It automatically got that for me. I stores it in my home folder under channels. There's a whole bunch of JPEGs in there, and that's just where all my icons are. So that's one way that you can go through this. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult, though, because, like I showed up here, all these unnamed channels, I don't even know if they're if they're good. I don't know what they are because they it didn't get any name for me. 